Hello space friends! The massive multiplayer space game EVE Online has what appears to be 409 playable ship classes. That's right, as of 2024 there's 409 different playable ship classes in this game. And this doesn't count ship classes that are only part of NPC factions such as like rogue drones, drifters, and sleepers, etc. This means it is almost impossible for any one EVE player to know everything about all of these ships. It takes a very seasoned EVE player to know instantly what various ship classes are. If I threw out the names such as Daredevil, Omen, Kikamora, or Avatar, would you know immediately what that was? But one can learn the ship size classifications and subclassifications a little bit easier. So if I were to say an Omen is an attack cruiser of a Mar design, or that a Kikamora is a destroyer of Triglavian design, or that a Stiletto is an interceptor, or a Munin is a Tech 2 heavy assault cruiser, uh, or that an Avatar is a giant space, you know what I mean almost instantly. Now, I had initially began to make a video about all ship size classifications, but I realized even just the classifications of these 409 ships would take really long, so I decided I'm going to break this up so that I'll cover only corvettes and frigates in this video. Maybe a later one, I'll go ahead, well probably later on, I'll go ahead and cover cruisers along with battle cruisers, and then battleships along with capital ships, etc. But all combat oriented ships in EVE are broken down into attack, combat, disruption, support, exploration, and even more specialized roles such as interception, interdiction, command ship, black ops, covert ops, and stealth bombers. They are also often categorized according to tech level. A tech 1 ship is more common, inexpensive, and requires less pilot skill points to use. Navy or fleet issue ships are also Tech 1 ships, but superior to the Tech 1 versions. And pirate ships are scary designs created by the various pirate cartels in EVE, and better still. Tech 2 ships are all higher tech versions of the original ship design, and can only be built from a Tech 2 blueprint, which in turn can only be created by a character highly skilled in various forms of science and engineering. Tech 2 ships require more rare items to engineer and build, but they are almost always more powerful or specialized into a certain role, so they can do that role very well. So, for example, a T1 exploration frigate, let's say the Amar Magnate, is good at exploration and okay at combat, whereas a T2 exploration variant, the Anathema, is great at exploration as it can use a covert ops cloak to travel at warp while cloaked. It has great scan probe bonuses, but not all that great in combat. Believe me, there is a use for almost every one of these roles and ship classes, even the smallest of frigates. But let's start with corvettes first and get them out of the way. Corvettes are no more than about 80 meters long and they are free. All capsuleers have access to a free corvette from their starting faction when they get into the game or accidentally die, which is outfitted with civilian weapons and modules and you get what you pay for. Corvettes are pretty much only good for training, traveling when you have nothing else, and occasionally they can be used for hilarious PvP shenanigans as no one expects them to be a threat of any kind. And now let's get on to frigates. Frigates are the smallest and cheapest ships in the game aside from corvettes and shuttles, but they're easily accessible for pilots of all skill levels and they're no more than about 100 meters on their longest axis. Frigates are the fastest and most maneuverable ships in the game. Their tactical advantage is their speed and difficulty to hit. In fact, a frigate with a small heat signature or sig radius can get right up under a battleship's nose and barely get hit by those big turrets if it stays moving. Of course, it's likely that said battleship will eventually prevail, but not before a swarm of the frigate's little friends show up and finish off the poor battleship. At least this is a scenario that plays out often in EVE. The frigate's weakness is, of course, low firepower and their inability to endure massive amounts of damage. Frigates are important as scouts, fast attack, search, tackle, and destroy. Now there is a huge variety of frigates. Let me explain how this categorization works a little bit. When you look at a ship's information panel in EVE under the Traits tab, such as this in Cursus, you'll notice various icons 
indicating the ship's traits. For example, this incursus uses small modules and is considered a combat ship. It tends towards hybrid turrets and armor tanking type. So it's basically a combat frigate. Now its brother, the Atron, is classed as an attack frigate, which means it's much faster, has quicker target lock, and often a bit more firepower. Usually attack ships have this firepower in the form of turrets. Every one of the four main racial types in EVE have two combat frigate classes and an attack frigate type. For the Galente Federation, the combat frigates are the Incursus, which uses turrets, and the Tristan, which uses combat drones, and the attack frigate is the Atron. For the Amara Empire, the combat frigates are the Punisher, the Tormentor, and the attack frigate is the Executioner. Basically, the combat ships are your primary ships of the line meant to stay in battle and go at it, and the attack frigates are kind of like fast interceptors meant to catch, hold, and destroy, and occasionally serve as scouts. In addition to the other frigates, every major empire has its own dedicated support frigate. A support ship, or for some reason they're called logi or logistic ships in EVE, literally repair and keep up the power levels of other ships in combat with the use of remote repair systems. In the case of the Mimitar Republic, the support ship is the Burst, and it uses bonuses for shield repairs, whereas the Amar have the Inquisitor, which is bonused for armor repairs. Logi, or repair ships, are a job that are very treasured for any fleet. True, you won't be dishing out destruction in these ships, but your companions will be grateful for your work. And then we have disruption ships. These are usually electronic warfare or e-warships meant to disrupt the flow of combat, whether by jamming sensors, nerfing target range, disrupting weapons tracking. For example, the Caldari Griffin can successfully jam the sensors of another ship so that it cannot target anything except the ship that jams it. And it used to be that a successful sensor jam could prevent you from targeting anything. Eventually, CCP Games realized that this was too powerful, and now the source of the jams can be targeted, but nothing else can be targeted. So the Caldari State has the Griffin, which jams sensors. The Galenti Federation has the Mollus, which dampens the targeting range of sensors, or the target lock speed of the ship. The Amar have the Crucifier, which can disrupt weapon accuracy, and the Mimitar have the Vigil, which can use target painters to bloom the SIG radius and make the target much easier to hit. And finally, there are the Exploration Frigates, all of which have bonuses to scan probes and data analyzers used for hacking or archaeological analysis. The scan probes scan down cosmic signatures or anomalies in space, which can turn out to be wormholes, mineable gas clouds, PvE combat sites to be formed for treasure and loot, or hacking in archaeological sites, and these require data analyzers to crack open the loot. Okay, now we have the Navy and Fleet issue versions of the Tech 1 frigates. All the major four empires have three frigate designs created by their military. The Fleet or Navy issue attack ships are always a variant of the T1 disruption frigate like the Mimitar Vigil Fleet issue, which is awesome because unlike the relatively useless standard Vigil, the Fleet issue version has all kinds of rocket bonuses for good firepower, and also a bonus to the Stasis Web of Fire range. Stasis Web of Fires in EVE are battle control devices that can slow a target way down, but their limitation is range, so a bonus to the webbing range of these ships is very helpful. Whereas the Caldari Griffin Navy issue can also fight better than the standard Griffin, which is only good at jamming, but its bonuses are for ECM drones, which is kind of sneaky. If the E-War drones can jam you rather than the ship itself, you have to destroy those drones to stop the jamming. The primary Navy or Fleet issue combat ship for every Empire is not a modification of a standard frigate, but its own unique design. So for example, the Galente Federation Navy Comet is an excellent combat frigate, a unique design that uses both hybrid turrets and drones, and is in my opinion the best bang for your buck among all the combat frigates. The Amar get the Slicer Navy issue, the Mimitar get the Republic Fleet Firetail, and the Caldari get the Caldari Navy Hookbill. Each major empire also has a navy or fleet version of the exploration frigates, which can do a bit more combat than the base version along with the bonuses to scan probes, hacking, and data analyzers. 
I will also note that the Sisters of Eve, which have a line of ships unique and separate from the major empires, have an exploration frigate called the Astero, which is the queen of exploration frigates since it can cloak while warping, has pretty good combat ability, and all the scan probe and hacking bonuses of other exploration frigates. Now we have to go on a side quest in the ship tree to cover the pirate frigates. These ships can only be built by farming the blueprint from the pirates' combat sites, or having a good standing with these pirates to gain access to their loyalty point stores, so they are more expensive. All the pirate factions, and I will go ahead and throw in the Triglavian designs into this, have their own frigate design and they are all kind of scary. Some are attack, others are combat frigates, and they are either bonused in ways that just make them kick ass in combat, or do unconventional things such as the Blood Raider Crewer, which can use energy vampires and has a bonus to stasis webifier range, or the Serpentus Daredevil, which is fast like an attack frigate, has a tremendous amount of DPS and hybrid turrets, as well as a bonus of stasis webifier strength, so that when it catches you, you aren't going anywhere and it'll melt you down. The larger pirate designs like cruisers and higher are typically just a much stronger variant of these frigates. And now on to tech 2 variants of these frigates, which make them more expensive but very effective specialists at what they do. Tech 2 variants of combat frigates are called assault frigates. So for example, if you think the Amar T1 Punisher is a tough little frigate, you'd be correct. But there are two Amar assault frigates based on this hull design the Vengeance and the Retribution, both of which can run an Assault Damage Control Module, which temporarily buffs the damage resists on these ships to make them insanely tough, but only for 15 seconds. On top of that, Assault Frigates can dish out significantly more damage. All the major empires have two Assault Frigate classes with this ability, each of the two with a different weapon type bonus, and there is one Assault Frigate of Triglavian design, the Nurgle, Assault frigates are a great choice for a fleet, especially with Logi support to keep them repaired right after their assault damage control wears off. Now the Tech 2 versions of the fast attack frigates are called Interceptors. Interceptors are no more effective in actual combat than their Tech 1 counterparts, but they are insanely fast in both warp and sublight speeds. They have a reduction to signature radius when using their speed boosting or prop module like the micro warp drive, so this means they appear to be smaller on sensors and are harder to hit. They also have a bonus to warp disruption range, this means they can more easily hold on to a target and prevent it from escaping into warp. Often victims of this ship find themselves tackled and unable to warp before they know what's going on, and an interceptor is almost always followed by a larger fleet of friends, so if you cannot get that interceptor off of you, then you can almost always guarantee that big trouble is on its way. Each of the four major empires have two versions of interceptors, one designed to fight as well as tackle targets, and the other which is more just dedicated to fast travel, tackling, and fast interception. Next up we have the Tech 2 Cloaky or Covert Ops frigates. Tech 2 versions of the Tech 1 Exploration frigates all can use Covert Ops cloaking devices, which means they can go to warp while cloaked and are able to evade things like gate camps, they can scout areas undetected, and with their scan probe bonus, they can find cosmic signatures very quickly. They are also capable of using not just normal scan probes, but combat scanner probes, which can scan down other player ships, stations, and even combat drones. It's a common misconception that in this game, if you're in the middle of open space far away from planets, targets, or stations, that you can't be easily found. But that's not true if combat probes are triangulating your position, and a covert ops frigate can do that. Covert ops frigates can also light covert ops Sanusuro fields, which means there is likely to be at least one, but more likely many, black ops battleships and other cloaky ships waiting to lock onto that Sino field and use unique jump abilities to teleport directly to the Sino. So covert ops frigates are the optimal scout and hunters for this kind of maneuver. The other T2 cloaking frigate are stealth bombers. They can also warp while cloaked. Now make no mistake, stealth bombers are not very tough, but they are not meant to stick around and fight like an assault frigate. Stealth bombers can use two weapons no other frigates can, and that's torpedoes and bombs. 
Torpedoes are heavy missile weapons, most effective against larger ships, usually only reserved for battleships, and the bombs can inflict massive destruction, especially to large ships in an area of effect. Now since stealth bombers are not tough, the typical maneuver is to line up on a target while cloaked, decloak and drop the bombs, and then immediately warp while the bombs blow everything up. Now those bombs are only allowed in null sec and wormhole space, not low sec, so the effectiveness of these ships is kind of a niche thing. Another T2 ship is the electronic attack frigates, which are all just upgraded versions of their T1 counterparts, with more effective disruption effects including jams, target dampening, weapons disruption, and target painting. And finally we have the T2 Logi or support frigates. T2 Logi frigates are almost comparable in effectiveness to even larger T1 support cruisers, except of course they are much faster, which means they are very well used when supporting groups of fast ships to keep them alive. Again your friends will thank you for bringing these ships to the fleet. Now I've had limited time this week so I thought I was going to be covering destroyers in this video, but then we're going to end up having like a 30 minute video. So we'll probably save destroyers and possibly cruisers together in a separate video. Also, I really want to thank the opportunity that my current patrons on patreon.com forward slash resurrected have given me. When I hear things like, when you made that custom starship for my dad, he hugged me, or my son loves to draw spaceships and can you make him a starship with a particular name on it, uh, that just really makes my day and I'm really glad to do that for you guys. Also, the Excelsior model is coming along nicely. You can follow the progress on that on Patreon. This one will also be offering custom renders on Patreon for this. So much work to do. I will probably be adding some specialized secret Eve content on Patreon as well at some point soon. I checked Eve Online's terms of service and no, I can't give you ISK or items in exchange for being a patron, but I can provide you with content or possibly instruction or some kind of service, but ideas on what you might like to see there are welcome in the comment section. Until next time, space friends.